learning objectives of this lecture are what are the various types of the blood group systems what are the hazards of mismatch what are the different types of blood group systems what are the hazards of mismatch blood transfusion what is erythroblastosis fetalysis and what is transplantation assalamu alaikum our topic of discussion for today is blood groups we know that there are many types of the blood group systems but the most important are abo and the rh system the abo system this system depends upon the presence of the antigen on the surface of rbcs mostly there are almost 30 different types of antigens present on the rbcs now the abo blood group system it depends upon two types of antigens antigens are also called as agglutinogen while antibodies are the agglutinin so if the patient is having a blood group then a antigen must be present in his blood while its corresponding antibody anti a antibody must be absent in his plasma while patient having b blood group should contain b antigen is in his blood while anti b antibody must be absent in his plasma here are shown the blood group genes that dictate the blood groups for example o o o a o b a a b b and a b and the antibodies are also called as agglutinins it includes igm igg igd ige and iga this figure shows us various types of blood groups group a group b group ab and group o the patient having blood group a must be carrying a antigen in his rbcs while anti b antibodies are present in his plasma but anti a antibodies will be absent while patient having blood group b must have b antigen in his blood while anti a antibodies are present in the plasma but the anti b antibody bodies must be absent in his plasma while patient having blood group a b must have both antigens a and b present in his blood while both antibodies are absent in his plasma and the blood group o have no antigen present in rbcs while anti a and anti b both antibodies are present in his plasma for the transfusion of the blood we must know about the blood group of the patient to determine the blood groups we use anti seras anti sera a anti sera b if the patient is having the blood group a and we will give anti sera a to him then agglutination of the rbcs will occur while anti sera b no agglutination of the rbcs will take place in patient having group b while adding anti sera a no agglutination of the rbcs will take place while if we add anti sera b to the blood group b then agglutination of the rbcs will take place in patient having blood group a b as both antigens are present then agglutination will be take place in both anti sera while in group o no antigen is present and both types of the antibodies are present so no agglutination will take place so group a b can be a universal recipient and group o can be a universal donor now the transfusion reaction you are working in a emergency and the patient presented to you with a bleed or a heavy blood loss then a transfusion of blood is required so we must determine the blood group and cross matching of the blood is done if the blood typing is not done properly and mismatched blood is given then transfusion reactions may occur the transfusion reactions for the mismatched blood can be immediate or delayed in case of delayed it includes anemia or the jaundice that are the delayed reactions but the immediate are agglutination of the rbcs or the excessive hemolysis of the rbcs while acute kidney shutdown can occur this involves antigen antibody reactions that will release toxins which in turn causes renal vasoconstriction it can also cause circulatory shock as whenever there is excessive hemolysis 
RBC count will be reduced, which in turn will reduce the blood volume, which in turn reduce the blood pressure and the renal blood flow. Whenever there is a decrease in the renal blood flow, GFR will be reduced, resulting in glomerular hydrostatic pressure decrease and the urine output will be decreased, resulting in circulatory shock. It can also block glomerular tubules because there will be the precipitation of the hemoglobin from the hemolyzed RBCs in the renal tubules. It may lead to the acute tubular necrosis. Now, the RH blood group system. This system is different from the ABO system. In RH blood group system, spontaneous agglutination seldom occur because it requires previous exposure for the development of antibodies. While in ABO blood group system, spontaneous antibodies develop. There are six types of the RH antigens commonly called as RH factors. The types are C, D, E, C, D, E. If the C antigen is present in the patient blood, then its C antigen must be absent in his blood. And if the D antigen is present, then its corresponding D antigen must be absent in his blood. If E antigen is present, then its corresponding E antigen must be absent in his blood. And the most common type is the D type. If the D antigen is present in the patient blood, he is Rh positive. And if the D antigen is absent in his blood, he is Rh negative. Now, the Rh immune response sensitization. If the RBC is containing Rh factor are injected to a person whose blood does not contain the Rh factor, that is the person is Rh negative, then the anti-Rh antibodies will develop slowly. They will reach to a maximum concentration about two to four months later. And this immune response occurs much greater in some people while less, lesser in others. With multiple exposure to the RH factor, an RH negative person will eventually become sensitized to the RH factor. Now, the erythroblastosis fatality. It is the disease of the newborn infant. It is characterized by the agglutination and the phagocytosis of the fetus RBCs. If the mother is Rh negative and the father is Rh positive and the baby inherited a Rh positive antigen from his father. So in the first pregnancy, Rh, neg neg Rh antigen from the baby will pass into the mother's placenta where it causes the formation of anti D antibodies, but first pregnancy is uneventful because for the development of anti D antibodies, multiple exposure is required. The chances of the development of disease are much less in the first baby, while they are more in the second or third pregnancy. So first pregnancy will be uneventful, the chances of acquiring a disease in a baby are more in the second and third pregnancies. Rh positive antigen can be passed from the fetal blood into the maternal blood at the time of parturition. These are already present in the maternal blood that react with the antigen present in the Rh positive baby, resulting in excessive antigen antibody reaction, hemolysis of RBC resulting in immature big size RBCs. How this disease is treated? We will replace the baby's Rh positive blood with the Rh negative blood. It is done gradually. 400 ml of the blood is replaced at certain intervals, one and a half to two hours. And this can be done up to three to four months. Now, how will we we'll know that all of the baby's Rh blood is replaced by the Rh negative blood. This can be determined by bilirubin level. When the bilirubin level becomes normal, it means that all of the Rh positive blood is replaced by the Rh negative blood. How we can prevent this disease? We will give anti D antibodies to the mother during the antenatal period during 28 to 30 weeks of the gestation. Or after the delivery, we will give anti D antibodies to the mother within 48 hours. This will neutralize the anti D antigen. This figure shows us that 
the mother is rh negative and the fetus is rh positive so the antigen from the baby enters into the mother via the placenta in between the pregnancies anti rh antibodies will develop and in the second pregnancy these antibodies will react with the rh positive fetus which in turn causes the excessive agglutination and the phagocytosis of the RBCs. If we need the transplantation of the tissues and organs, for example, in case of burns, then grafts can be taken from different organisms or different species or either from the same individual. There are four types of the grafts. Autografts, isografts, allografts, and the xenografts. Autograft is that graph which is taken from the same individual or the same person. For example, in burns, skin grafting is done. The chances of the rejection in the autograft is almost nil. While in isograft, graft is taken from the identical twin. Here, the chances are almost nil. Here, the chances of rejection are also nil. While in allograft, the graft is taken from one human to the other or from one animal of the spe same species to the other animal of the same species. Here, the chances of the rejection are present, while in xenograft, it is the transplantation of any organ from humans to the animals or the animals of the other species. Here, the chances of the rejection are very high. Now, who is res responsible for the rejection? It is the HLA antigen. HLA antigen, it is mostly present on the surface of antigen presenting cells. So for the transplantation, tissue typing is required. There are six different types of antigens which are present on the WBCs and other tissue cells. While there are 150 different antigens present. So numerous combinations can be made from these 150 different antigens. As only six different antigens are present on a single individual on the cells. The HLA antigen is of three types. Class 1, which is present on all surfaces of all the cells of the body. HLA 2, it is present on the surface of the lymphocytes. It is li linked with the immunity. While HLA 3, it is concerned with the formation and activation of complement system. So, it is linked with immunity. To prevent the graft rejection, we give glucocorticoids therapy. It will suppress the lymphocytes, which is responsible for the graft rejection. We will give certain drugs or toxics for the lymphoid tissue, such as azathioprine, and the cyclosporin drugs that block the activity of the T cells or the helper T cells.